let us consider a rectangular glass block glass slab okay we will place it on a paper fix it to a drawing board assume that this is a drawing board and this on this drawing board we have a paper fix it to it and i am placing the glass slab over here i'll trace the glass slab keep it aside so a b c d is the boundary of the glass slab so opposite sides are parallel this forms a rectangle now i'll take a scale and draw a straight line here like this say p and this is q okay and now i'll place a normal with the help of a this is 90 degrees protractor i'll take a normal and then measure some angle and take at some angle i'll take the line like this so pq i want to represent it as a incident ray what i'll do is i'll take two pins here P1, P2, two pins. I'll fix those two pins on the drawing board perpendicularly like this. Now again, I'll keep the glass slab over it. These two pins are in straight line. Okay, I will see that the heads of the two pins are also in the same plane. Now I'll observe these two pins from this direction after keeping the glass slab and try to put two more pins. in line with the top p1 and p2 so what i mean to say is when i observe from this direction from the bottom side here okay these two pins should be appearing in a straight line and in the same line i'll keep two more pins let us say this way these two are the pins say p3 and p4 i'll fix this now that means that when i am looking at this direction what is happening is the p1 pins p1 and p2 as well as the two pins here p3 and p4 appear to be in a straight line now i'll remove the slab i'll join these two pins and draw a straight line combining these two it like this p3 and p4 what does this indicate this line pq is the incident ray once the light ray is entering this glass slab it is bending and traveling this direction and again when it is coming out of the glass slab it is coming this way so this forms let us assume that this point is r and this is s so qr will be the A refractor light ray, which is bending when it is going from rarer medium to denser medium glass. Okay, and here if I draw a normal, these two light rays, these two angles here, this angle and this angle, both will be equal because these two surfaces are parallel. Okay, now when the light ray is coming. out of the glass slab rs this ray will correct as an emergent ray okay this shows that whenever the light ray is traveling from a rarer medium to a denser medium it is bending towards the normal and when it is again coming back into the same medium it is going at this surface cd it is bending away from the normal so this will be the angle of refraction these two angles will be equal and here again if we measure this angle we will call it as angle of emergence e so rs is the emergent ray it is coming out of the glass slab this emergent ray ang emergent angle will be equal to that of the angle of incidence you know why because this is a glass slab abcd and opposite surfaces are parallel since these two rays are parallel we have these two angles equal suppose i extend this light ray i produce it back towards the forward and see that this this produced light ray here 
will be parallel to that of the emergent ray means there is ultimately there is no change in the direction of the incident ray but the light ray is shifted little bit towards the sides by how much it is shifting if we measure this particular distance with the help of a scale we will be able to know what is the lateral shift lateral shift means shifting towards the side so the light ray incident light ray is shifted towards the side here okay but now there is some angle of incidence so we have the angle of refraction in case the angle of incidence is zero the angle of refraction will also be zero as we have discussed earlier that when the trolley is coming straight in a normal direction to the, the boundary what is happening is there is no change in the direction of the motion of the trolley it is going along the same straight path but with lesser speed okay in order to know how much does the light ray bend when it is going from one medium to the other medium okay we will consider one small example where let us assume that this is air and this is glass light is coming in the form of a wave so this is the wave which is coming like this and once it is coming say a dash b dash is the wave which is coming this wave is coming in this direction it is oblique okay so it is coming with sudden speed here say the velocity here is v1 okay in sudden amount of time it is coming over here now the a and b a b is the wave which is striking at the point a here now by the time the wave completely passes into the glass medium here what will happen is it will bend and travel okay what i mean to say is the wave is coming this way as we have discussed in the exa other example like the two wheels of the trolley front of two wheels of the trolley out of these two one wheel is crossing the boundary first and the other wheel is crossing it later like that what is happening here is the first point on the wave which is crossing into the glass medium from a to glass is a by the time this point b on the wave reaches the boundary this point a on the wave will reach the point d so if v1 is the velocity of the wave in the air medium and v2 is the velocity of the medium in the glass here v1 so the distance travel by the wave from b to c let us assume that it is v1 delta t delta t is the time which it will take for the uh, point b on the wave to reach the point c here in the same time the point a will reach d it is in the next medium okay so the distance ad will be equal to v2 delta t here this is v1 delta t this will be v2 delta t we want a relation between these two distances we want a relation between the velocities okay so it is not possible for us to measure always the velocities in both the medium what we will try to do is we will try to convert that into angles okay and then find out what is the relation between their ratio of the velocities and the angles with which the wave makes with the boundary clear 